Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. So today we've got this impossible looking integral to deal with. It's got not only a quartic in the denominator, but it's got these arctans uh, next to them as well, I sort of muddled in there. Um, I first came, uh, I first became aware of this integral when my friend sent it to me whilst I was uh, getting ready for the gym, and I decided to go ahead and solve it, and it took me 30 minutes, which meant I was 30 minutes late to the gym. Uh, so that was a bad idea, but that's what happens when you have uh, a an obsession with, with maths, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so well, what can we notice about this integral first of all? Uh, the first thing I noticed is that the arctan of x functions are next to um, even powers of x. And so I had to think, well, if we were to factor out a x squared arctan from this, then what would we be left with? And well, that was my, that was my motivation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor out an x squared arctan of x from this function or this, this, this part and this part here. So in doing that, we get the integral from 1 to infinity of, uh, and then in the, in the denominator, so factoring those out. So bringing out an x squared arctan of x, um, we get 1 plus, and then factoring out of this, we get x squared, like that. And well, what we left with, well, we left with the x and the x cubed, so plus x plus x cubed dx with of course the one up top okay well what can we notice here well we can notice that we can do a similar thing and factor out an x from the x and the x cubed now factoring out the x we get x 1 plus x squared dx and as we can see we've got a common 1 plus x squared uh, in the denominator here. so let's factor that out okay well what do we do here well we can factor out an x from the x squared arctan x and the x here so let's do that okay well where do we go from here well the thing that i noticed um and i think um with enough practice of integration differentiation you should be able to notice it as well is that we've got this one plus x squared here and we've got this arctan of x and we've got them sort of we've got them in the same problem right and well how are they related to each other how is one plus x squared and arctan of x related to each other well we know that the derivative of arctan of x, so I'm going to write 10 to the minus 1 just for simplicity, the derivative of arctan of x, or the inverse tangent, is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So if that 1 plus, one, uh, 1 plus x squared could be brought up to the top, it could be cancelled with that 1 on the bottom. So that was the motivation behind doing this next uh, step, and that's doing a substitution. And we're going to say, let t equal arctan of x. So we are now doing a substitution. So that implies that dt is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Um, that x squared looks ridiculous. x squared, there we go. Um, which also implies that dx is 1 plus x squared dt like so. Um, if t is arctan of x, then that implies that x equals tan of t. And uh, let's talk about the limits now. So the limits, so when um, when x is, is 1, well, what's t going to be? Well, it's going to be arctan of 1. What is arctan of 1? Well, it's pi over 4. And well, what about the second limit? So when x is infinity, we've got t equals arctan of infinity. And as x approaches infinity, arctan of x is, uh, or approaches pi over two. Okay, so we've got everything we need here to implement the substitution. So we're now gonna have the integral from pi over four to pi over two of one over now we've got this x times 1 plus x squared. So I'm going to change the x to tan of t. But I'm going to leave that 1 plus x squared there, and you'll see why. And then we've got x arc tan of x. Well, the x turns into tan of t. And well, what does the arc tan of x turn into? Well, that turns into t. 
and then we've got plus 1. Uh, and then we are times it by dx. And what did we say dx was? Well, it was 1 plus x squared dt. So we've got 1 plus x squared dt like this. And as you can see, the 1 plus x squared up top and the 1 plus x squared down there cancel each other out. Okay, so we are left with this integral right here to solve. And to be honest, it's, n <laughs> it's not much easier. We have definitely simplified it down a lot, but the actual integral itself is quite difficult. Um, and so we're going to have to manipulate it a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to notice that we've got this 1 over tan of t right here. Well, what is 1 over tan? 1 over tan is, of course, cot. Those sort of weird trig functions that you get introduced to that you never really use. I don't know. Do people use them? Anyway, um, so yeah, we've got this 1 over tan of t, um, which is cot. Um, so let's implement that. So we're going to have the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of cot t over, and then we've got t times tan of t plus 1 dt. And well, we're actually going to do the same thing to the tan of t down in the denominator there t over cot of t plus 1, like this. Okay, well, let's tidy this up a bit. Let's times the top and the bottom by cot of t. Let's do that. And this has made our lives a lot easier, because we can now do integration by parts. So let's set u equal to um, uh, 1 over t plus cot of t, and let's set v dash, or the derivative of v, as cot squared of t, because we pick u and v depending on which one we can integrate. We can integrate um, cot squared of t fairly easily. We can't integrate fairly easily 1 over t plus cot of t. And so that's going to be the one we differentiate, and the cot squared is going to be the one that we integrate. Um, so differentiating uh, uh, u here, we can use the chain rule. So u dash is going to be equal to, now this can be rewritten as t plus cot of t to the power of negative 1. And so bringing that negative 1 to the front, we get minus 1, timesing by the derivative of inside of the of the bracket, so times the derivative of t plus cot of t. Well, that gives you 1 minus cosec squared of t times by the original bracket, t plus cot of t, but this time with a minus 2 there. So the derivative of u, u dash, is going to be negative 1 minus cosec squared of t over t plus cot of t squared, like this. Okay, let's deal with this uh, v dash over here. So we need to integrate cot squared of t. Now, integrating cot squared of t, um, it is fairly difficult. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not too bad. Um, just have a go, basically. You just use trig identities. Um, and what you get is that the uh, integral is v equals negative cot of t minus t, like this. And then factoring out the minus sign, you get v equals negative t plus cot of t, like so. Okay, now applying integration by parts. So integration by parts is uv minus the integral of v u dash or v du dx. My Apple Pencil battery is low. Oh dear. Uh, I've got to be quick. <laughs> so we get the uh, uv. So u times v. Well, what is u times v? Well, u times v, so this times this, well, that's just going to give us negative 1. So we've got negative 1. 
and then we're going to get minus the integral of v du dx. Uh, so v du dx, well, there's v, where's du dx? That's, that's there. And so in doing this, the negatives cancel out, and the t plus cot of t cancel out, and so we get uh, 1 minus cosec squared of t over t plus cot of t dt. Okay, and well, where do we go from here? Well, how can we, how can we solve this integral down below? Well, what we're going to do is, in fact, a another substitution. And what then the substitution we're going to do? I'm going to use u this time. Uh, so here we go. Uh, and also, I should put my limits in. This will just get you negative one. And then, yeah, as I said, we've got this integral to deal with. We're going to be using a another substitution. And the substitution we're going to be using this time is going to be the uh, u, I'm going, to say, I'm going to say u this time, is going to be equal to t plus cot of t. So just the denominator here. The reason being is because if you think ahead a little bit, what's the derivative going to be? Well, the derivative is going to be, well, well, what's the derivative of t? Well, just 1. And what's the derivative of cot? Well, negative cosec squared, like that. So that's our incentive, basically. Um, dt, of course. Um, because when we rearrange for dt, we get dt is equal to du over 1 minus cosec squared t, which is going to cancel with that numerator up there. Um, okay, let's think about the limits for a second. So when t is pi over 4, what is u going to be? So we're going to get pi over 4 plus cot of pi over 4. Now, cot of pi over 4 is just 1. And so we're going to get, um, so when uh, t equals pi over 4, we're going to get u equals pi over 4 plus 1. And when t is equal to pi over 2, what is u going to be equal to? Well, we're going to get pi over 2. Um, but then we're adding cot of pi over 2. Now, cot of pi over 2 is just going to be 0, because cot is 1 over tan. And tan of pi over 2 is um, technically, you know, in infinity. As t approaches pi over 2, tan of t approaches infinity so one over that is going to give us zero and so we get we, we get t plus zero uh, so in other words we're just getting pi over two as our u we've got the negative at the front and we have got the integral now from pi over four plus one to pi over two and we have got um the numerator, which is 1 minus cosec squared of t. And the denominator, which is t plus cot of t, but we've said that that's u now. And then, well, what was dt? Uh, well, dt was du over 1 minus cosec squared of t. So we're going to times it by du over... 1 minus cosec squared of t. And I hope you can see how these two are going to cancel now. And so what we are left with is the uh, negative integral from pi over 4 plus 1 to pi over 2 of 1 over u du. Now this is a standard integral, of course, um, and that gives us ln of u. So we're going to get negative and then we're going to get ln of u evaluated from uh, pi over 4 plus 1 to pi over 2. So in doing this, we get negative, and we're going to get ln of pi over 2 minus ln of pi over 4 plus 1. 
and so that means we've got negative and then using laws of logs we've got ln pi over 2 over pi over 4 plus 1 and um, just to simplify it a little bit we're going to times everything in that fraction by 4 so that gives you negative ln 2 pi over pi plus 4 and then that negative sign all that does is it comes inside up here and raise and it, it gets raised to the power and then flips the fraction so our answer is ln of pi plus 4 over 2 pi and that is your solution to this extremely awful looking <laughs> awful looking um, integral a very intimidating integral i must say however we solved it very nicely